What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Today we are covering all of the things that I dislike or hate about my E92 M3. However, I must be upfront with you guys. It was very difficult for me to make this list because there's really not much that I actually hate about this car. This is easily one of my favorite cars, especially in the spec that I have. And so to actually find things that I disliked about this car, I have to be pretty nitpicky. So I don't want this video to come off like, oh, I'm not grateful or I don't like this car. I absolutely love it. So this is my 2008 E92 M3. It is the six speed manual version. It is a single hump, no navigation. And this car is just an absolute dream spec to me. I love it so much. Sounds amazing, looks amazing, and it is a blast to drive. But if you're further interested in this car and you kind of want to know which modifications I have on the car, everything I've done to it, I have an entire video talking about that, as well as a complete build sheet. I will have it linked down below. You can also check out my website, www.thickwhips.com, where I lay out everything on every single one of my builds. And that will help you if you have any other questions about any of my cars. <laughs> What can you not love about the V8 in the E9X M3? It's just too good. Too good with a proper exhaust setup. This car sounds insane. But that's enough about the things that I do like. Let's talk about some of the things that I don't like. However, it's difficult to do that when you get to listen to that exhaust system. All right, so one of the things that I don't like about these cars from the factory is just the overall seating position with the OEM seats that come in the E9X M3. The factory seats are actually pretty good in terms of overall comfort. However, the actual seating position is just really high. Now I'm six foot two and I find that in the E8X and E9X cars, the seating position overall is just super, super high. Your head is almost hitting the headliner in the car. And of course the easiest way to take care of that is to go ahead and get some aftermarket seats. I went for the Recaro pole positions in this car and then I have the Sportster CSs in my 1M clone. So that really just took care of all of the issues when it came to the overall seating position. I find this car is far more enjoyable to drive with these seats in the car versus the factory seats. Now from a comfort perspective, would I wanna sit in pole positions for six hours if I was going on a road trip? Probably not. I would take the factory seats over these seats. But this car isn't a road trip car. I don't really find myself in that position too often. So for me, switching out the seats is a must and the factory seats are just kind of an, an overall annoyance or disappointment. The S65 does not actually have a physical oil dipstick. Is something like that the end of the world? Absolutely not. But is it convenient to have one? Yes. With the S65, you actually check the oil in the instrument cluster. You have to wait till the car is actually warmed up and then you can measure the oil and see how much you actually have in there. However, in my opinion, some things are just better old school and I much prefer having the physical oil dipstick. So you can just check physically how much oil you have in the car. Even while the engine is cold, you can do so very quickly when you have the dipstick and you can also check the quality of the oil at that time. It's not the biggest deal in the world to wait for the car to warm up and use the oil measuring system in the instrument cluster, but I think it would be nice to just have a physical dipstick. You'll also notice that in a lot of these E9X M3s, there are some trim pieces that begin to flake. The coating that is on top of them, this black plastic coating, tends to just chip right off. You'll notice it on the handles over here, You'll notice it by the window controls, and you'll also notice it on the steering wheel finishing trim piece. Those are the most notable places, however, it can happen in other areas, like the front of the cup holders, and on the trim piece around the cup holders, you'll see it happen there. Some people buy new ones, some people actually recoat them, and then some people actually just chip away the flake until it's all gone, because the layer that's underneath that actually isn't too bad and sort of matches, it's just like a semi my gloss black. Now my car is actually all chipped away. There isn't really any more to be chipped away on the door handles. However, I'm starting to get a little bit 
of fading on my cup holders, on the front of the cup holders, and the steering wheel, I just replaced the steering wheel along with the finishing trim. So this is aftermarket and it's all leather by Aza Auto Wheel, which really just takes care of that problem overall. It's not gonna happen again. That's why I went that route. Is it that big of a deal? No, but is it something that is kind of annoying? Yeah. Another issue that the majority of S65 suffer from are leaky and sweating valve covers. Now this car is not gonna be the best example because I am one of the lucky owners that bought an E9X M3 where the previous owner did actually replace the valve covers already. However, I'm willing to bet that I will have to replace these again at some point because it is a very common problem and you can actually see that the valve cover is starting to bubble up a little bit, which is something that is just inevitable and is going to happen with these valve covers. But if you are looking to buy an E9X M3 with the S65, the first thing that I would be looking at are the actual valve cover gaskets. I'll throw some images on the screen so you can see what the leaky ones look like, but it's very common to just have lots of leaks underneath the valve cover gasket which in turn just causes more oil to leak down underneath and just makes a mess overall. They do make powder coated valve covers that just look a little bit nicer and they are upgraded so when I do actually swap these out I will go for a different set. However it seems like for now we're good and we shouldn't have any issues but out of all of the E9 XM3s that I looked at before I purchased this one here every single one of them had leaky valve covers so it is definitely something to look out for and definitely an annoyance with these cars. There are all also some other things that will happen with this car when you start to upgrade things like the exhaust. BMW uses a lot of plastics on their interior. Now this is definitely my own fault because I have decided to make this car louder. However, I have noticed that even in factory cars, the plastic just starts to rattle a bunch. You find in the rear, you get a lot of little tiny plastic rattles. And then overall up front where there's little plastic trim pieces within the leather dash, you start to get rattles from there. These cup holders tend to rattle a little bit. So will you notice that on a factory car? If it has higher mileage, probably. But will you notice it on a car that has an upgraded exhaust and is even louder? Absolutely. That is something that you're going to notice over time and something that's just sort of annoying after a while. So my remedy for that is to just drive the car more, harder, louder, and enjoy the exhaust and that wonderful V8. There are other fixes like actually taking out those plastic pieces and actually wrapping any of the contact points with something like a, a Teflon material or like a silicone material. So it just sort of deadens that plastic to plastic rattle that you're getting. But I found that it doesn't really annoy me to the point where I need to, you know, start dissecting the car or anything. Another very common annoyance or problem with the S65 are going to be the rod bearings. Pretty much everybody knows that it's a wise idea on these high revving NA motors to go ahead and upgrade your rod bearings. I highly suggest going with bearings that have more of a clearance rather than just replacing them with the factory ones because you will be back in the same boat further down the line. So you might as well go with the upgraded version. There are a few companies out there that make rod bearings for these cars and while you are there, also take care of your motor mounts. More than likely, your motor mounts need to be replaced and you're already dropping the subframe to take care of the rod bearings. Just do your motor mounts while you're there. Another annoyance that I started to notice with my car in particular is I have a bit of headliner sag happening in the back. Now this is a 15 year old car. It does have almost 100,000 miles. So this doesn't really surprise me that the glue is starting to fail a little bit in my headliner. This is also a fairly common problem with these cars. It's not at the point for me personally where I feel like I need to rip the headliner apart and actually re-glue it, but down the line, I probably will have to do that. Maybe I'll switch it up and go to like an Alcantara headliner. But yeah, back here, I'm starting to get a little bit of headliner sag. And with the fluctuation in heat and cold, we're in the Carolinas, it's rather humid here. It's just a matter of time that that glue is gonna start letting go. So something that I did not like about my E92 M3 when I first bought it, actually hated, were the factory E9X brakes. In my opinion, they are garbage. The E9X M3s come with one piston brakes from factory. Why they decided to do that on an M car, I have no idea. So I actually went ahead 
ahead and did the F8X retrofit. So these are actually from an F80 M3 front and rear, which made a huge difference in the way that this car brakes. The stopping power is far superior, and not to mention they look a lot nicer behind these wheels. There are obviously a lot of options when it comes to aftermarket brakes for the E9Xs, but after enough aggressive driving and hard braking, you will notice that the E9X brakes get pretty soft relatively quickly. And in my opinion, the stock brakes is just one of the points where these cars kind of fall short. The next annoyance or problem is probably the most common one that you hear in a lot of these videos. It's the gas mileage. The gas mileage is not great. This is an NA V8 car. The S65 loves to drink love to drink its gas fast. You'll get about 200 miles to a full tank in this car, which really isn't that great. And I'm averaging right now 14.7 miles per gallon. I've seen anywhere from 12 miles per gallon all the way up to 22. It just really depends on the style of driving that I'm doing. Not to mention, gas is pretty expensive right now. We'll be spending a lot more money at the pump with a car like this. But as long as you just look at it like this, smiles per gallon, not miles per gallon, you will be just fine. How can you not smile? So another annoyance that I will talk about isn't really with this car, but I have owned an E90 M3 as well that was a DCT. So this model right here is a six speed manual, but the DCTs just inherently have a lot of bucking to them. They aren't the most comfortable to drive at slower speeds. Once you get up to speed and you're shifting, the DCT feels fantastic. It's a really fun transmission to own one of these cars in. But I will say one of the biggest annoyances when I had my E90 was just the slow speed speed jerking that you get with that DCT. The majority of people know that that just kind of comes with the territory of that transmission and it really is an awesome transmission but at slow speeds can be a bit annoying. So this E92 M3 specifically has the bass sound system. There's nothing special about it. And I will say it's a bit of a letdown when it comes to, you know, wanting to listen to music that actually sounds great in this car. I like to think that the majority of the time I'm not really listening to music. I'm listening to the V8 and the sounds that this car makes when I drive it because that's really the reason that I bought this car. But you know, if you are someone who wants to take your car on longer road trips or just maybe a trip to the mountains or the beach, it's nice to have some good sounding music. So what I actually did in this car is I upgraded to the Beamer Tech Alpha One sound system, made a huge difference in the way that this car sounds overall with all of the speakers. So if you do have the bass sound system in your E9X M3, just be prepared. The sound is not that great. It's not as bad as the new Supra, though. I will say that is the worst sound system I've ever had in any car. But for an older car just like this, one of the easiest ways to upgrade is just to go ahead and do the Beamer Tech Alpha one sound system. I like to think that the V8 is my <laughs> is my radio. <laughs> Another super common problem and just annoyance with these cars is the infamous cowbell noise that you get from the drive shaft. On these drive shafts, the center support and carrier bearing can go bad on these cars. And then what you will start to hear is a cowbell like ding every time you get in and move the car. Now my car doesn't do it terribly yet. It is starting to make the noise, but it doesn't do it nearly as bad as some other ones do. But nonetheless, I am gonna replace that soon. I'll try to give you guys an example of what that sounds like here. Definitely not the worst I've heard, but that sound is indicative of the center support carrier bearing, which is for sure just going to get worse over time. So we've got to replace it. All right, so we are going to bring up another fairly obvious issue with these cars or just annoyance. It's gonna be the cup holders, guys. These cup holders are just absolute trash. Now these ones I've replaced because my OEM ones that came in the car didn't even work, which is the most common problem with these E9X cars is the cup holders just break all the time. They are made with very cheap plastic and the overall design is just kind of dumb in general. So what a lot of people do is they'll just replace them with the OEM ones or you can get the aftermarket ones from Amazon, which is what I just did. Now the easiest way to tell if they are aftermarket is they will eject from the console fast. These ones come out very, very quickly 
And that's the easiest way to tell if they are aftermarket. The factory BMW ones have a much more slow ejection to them. But nonetheless, these do get the job done. However, I must say, they are just cheap and annoying and they make a ton of noise no matter which ones you get. And also, I feel like they're in a terrible spot. If you have drinks out here and you have a passenger, you're gonna have to tell your passenger to keep their knees down because they will end up hitting the cup holders and spill your drinks everywhere, which again, doesn't make a whole lot of sense from a design perspective. But yeah, the cup holders in these cars not the best. One of the other common issues with these E9X M3s is you will start to notice that the dimmers on the mirrors will burn. You can see how it's beginning to burn around there. And unfortunately, these mirrors are not cheap to replace, but this will just end up getting worse and worse. And eventually the entire mirror will just look brownish or goldish, whereas it really should just have like a greenish bluish hue to it. This is just another super common problem with these cars. Again, a bit annoying, but I guess that is the price we pay to have a beautiful E92 M3 in the garage. <laughs> another annoyance with my E9X M3, the seat belt extending arms or extenders. So in these cars, there's actually a little arm placed behind each seat that is supposed to slowly hand you your seat belt every time you get in and out of the car. However, I find that uh, nine times out of 10, they don't work. The majority of E92 M3s that I've been in that have those arms, the owners actually just code them out, which is exactly what I did. I just used Beamer code and I coded them off so that stupid arm doesn't keep coming out and just bringing me nothing. <laughs> this way, I just grab the seatbelt like I would in any other car and it's fine. I think those are just silly and quite unnecessary if I'm being honest. It's just another plastic thing to make noise in this car. Leave it to BMW to just try and over-engineer everything. Maybe on paper it seemed like a good idea, but with these older cars, we don't need arms to feed us our seat belts. We can handle grabbing them just fine. <laughs> Another super common annoying problem with these cars is the winged mirrors always misalign with the piece that mounts onto the actual door. So there's actually a pretty easy fix for this and it does help, but I will say over time, it just gets misaligned again for whatever reason. It's the same way on my 1M clone. I have the E9X M mirrors on that car and it's the exact same thing. They're just always misaligned for whatever reason. So that is just one thing that I found to be kind of annoying with these cars. Another annoyance with these cars. Come on, come on. Oh man, I love the S65 and I love the horsepower, but this torque, the torque is not that impressive. It's uh, kind of a letdown when it comes to this car. You're looking at 295 torque and the horsepower is about 420, but the torque just feels, come on, takes forever. But it's great, once you get up there and this car is in its element, which is in the higher RPMs, it is amazing. Sounds good, feels fast, drives good. Obviously it handles amazingly well, but that torque to just get up to five, 6,000 RPMs is very sluggish. And I always try to tell people, if you are interested in buying one of these cars and you value speed or you are comparing it to like a 340 or an F80, then this car is not going to be for you. You are not going to enjoy this car because that's not really what these cars are all about. These cars are about the sounds, the experience, the connection, and that high revving V8 and the handling. If you're just looking for a torquey, roll racing, street racing car, this is absolutely not the car for you. You will be let down when you experience the torque in this car. Especially if you're comparing this to any of the newer cars that are now in line six with turbos and twin turbos, this thing is gonna feel super, super slow. Again, you just have to be cognizant of, you know, why you're buying this car in the first place. All right, you guys, so there you go. That is my complete list of everything that annoys me or I hate with my E92 M3. But like I said, I had to dig deep 
to come up with this list. This car is just so good, I love it. And I think that all of the positives far outweigh any of the negatives in owning an E9 XM3. But I would love to hear what you guys thought of my list. Do you agree? Do you have anything that you want to add? Leave them down in the comments. As always, I appreciate you guys. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. But I appreciate you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.